Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. This is Kevin Shively, lead pastor at St. Matthew Lutheran Church in York, Pennsylvania, with this week's edition of Preaching Points for this coming Sunday, March the 28th, 2020, Palm Sunday or the Sunday of the Passion. As the case may be, I'll be reading the Gospel text, Mark 15, verses 1 through 39. And I'll be reading that from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 15th chapter. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? <clears throat> Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. <clears throat> but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them again. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. <clears throat> after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide which each should take. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. 
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the, the, now when the centurion, who stood facing Jesus, saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. The Gospel of the Lord. Pilate didn't live in Jerusalem. So why was he there with his whole army? Well, it was to keep order during the Passover. Because when the Passover festival was held, thousands and thousands of people from all over the place would descend upon Jerusalem for that festival. Things were being stirred up by the religious leaders, that thin slice of the elite of Jerusalem society, uh, because they opposed Jesus and could see that he was threatening their power and their system <clears throat> and their position. This could not be in their minds. And so what did they do? They handed him over to the authorities who could do what they were not permitted to do by law. They could put Jesus to death. In other words, they got Pilate to do their dirty work for them. I'm often wondered about Pilate in the beginning of this text where he said that he was, where the text tells us that Pilate was amazed. It's like he couldn't understand why they were so opposed to Jesus. I think this is an interesting thing because we're very quick to blame Pilate for what happened. Pilate was by no means a great man and I'm not lifting him up to be one to be imitated. But he ended up only doing what they demanded that he would do in putting Jesus to death. Pilate even says to them, why? Why do you want me to do this? Why are you so set on destroying this man's life? What evil has he done? It made no difference to the crowd incited by the religious leaders. They didn't want to hear the facts. They didn't want to hear the truth. They wanted what they wanted. Barabbas released Jesus crucified. It's scary, but Mark really points out here in this version of the Passion Story, in Mark's version of the Passion Story, this perversion of justice. It was utterly predictable. You could almost see it coming. But it also involves people who should have known better. These elites of Jerusalem couldn't bear to think that this Jesus of Nazareth was indeed the Messiah of God. There's something wrong here, really wrong. And in seeing this scene unfold again for us, it's very interesting to me that these religious leaders were out to protect their privilege, the systems that kept them in power, their authority. And this is a horrible thing that happens. But it is just the sort of thing that happens when people with power respond when they're being threatened with jealousy, fear, and doing whatever they need to do to protect themselves. Are we people with power? Do we do what we need to do to protect ourselves and our privilege and our power? Difficult things to think about as we head into this Holy Week, as we hear again the story of the passion of our Lord, his suffering, his death. As we walk with Jesus from the triumph of his entry into Jerusalem to the ugly darkness and death of his cross. But we know too that's not the end of the story. 
for Easter comes and Jesus is raised from the dead. And as awful as this crucifixion is, it was necessary to make us one with God so that Jesus would take our sin and that God might claim us through him for eternity. God bless you. Hope to see you in some of our in-person services this week. Otherwise, please join us online. And may God grant you and yours a blessed Holy Week and next weekend a joyous Easter. Until next time, God's peace.